I'm going to introduce our two guests today. Um, Jessica Hanna is a Los Angeles based director and producer. She is a member of the Kilroys, an activist artist group working for gender parity in the American theater, an artist in residence at Thymoly Arts and a regional coordinator for Statera Arts Mentorship Program. Began trading with the City Company in 2002, performed with the company in 2010 and 2013 at the Getty Villa, and is currently a board member. She co-founded Bootleg Theater and was its producing and managing director for 12 years, and her focus has been on new work development. That's a small part of her incredible bio, which as a reminder is all in the Dropbox. Jessica, can you give us your pronouns? And then I want to ask you what I've been asking everybody, which is what is your seminal theater experience or what has been a theater experience that has really lived in you for for a long time and what comes to mind when i say that um hi my uh pronouns are she her hers um i uh uh i always go back to um i saw the normal heart uh at the hangar theater i was think i was 14 I want to say and it was it was uh the hangar was a is a summer uh theater company in Ithaca New York where I grew up and at the time it was run by a guy named uh, Robert Moss and he was bringing up he was able to bring up plays that were just happening so the normal heart had really I think it had just been running in like it had maybe even the you know it was in that year um so it was very brand new and it was one of the first theater experiences that I had that made me um made me understand that the the that you could talk about right now um and i could be moved and educated in a way um that i had not uh experienced before and especially with it the feeling of being within a group of people who were energized by what we were seeing and um energized enraged is actually probably a more uh, apt word for it but it was the first time that that experience of um of like mm, just energy and social justice and now and where we are right now it was really it, it all happened at once and i was blown away by that yeah thank you so much that's awesome reminds me of the first time that i saw rent which yeah it's a similar similar experience mm -hmm. um speaking of rent rent is jesus's favorite show just kidding jesus doesn't like rent at all <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna get so much hate mail thank you Camille. i'm sorry jesus also doesn't like cats so if you like rent <laughs> the musical and the the, the the and the the animals, the, the animals. <laughs> um, <laughs> more hate email more hate email <laughs> love you jesus jesus is the community partnerships director at center theater group where he spearheads the design and implementation of free bilingual community programs at partner sites throughout the community of Boyle. <laughs> Programs include the library playwriting series, theater-based workshops and commissions, and take place at three Boyle Heights libraries and CTG's costume shop. Currently, he is working with 11 local playwrights and community members who have contributed short stories as part of the community stories series. He's also been an artistic leader in LA for years um, and is on the artistic team at CTG. Jesus, will you share your pronouns? And then um, what is that? What is that big theater experience for you that popped into your head? So I missed the last part of your question because my internet is horrible. Do you want to repeat that? I'm sorry. Yes, what is the, can you share your pronouns and what the theater experiences that comes into your head is particularly like seminal or, or profound? Okay. Uh, uh, my pronouns are on my name right there, including L, because I'm bilingual. Watch out. Uh, the mm, seminal, uh, you know, I didn't come from a <clears throat> theater background. Uh, you know, I'm from Boyle Heights. Uh, I grew up in East LA. I went to East LA College. I went to Cathedral High School. I, I went to public school in the beginning, Catholic school later. So theater was not part of my world. Um, I watched a lot of TV. I was a latchkey kid for those young people. Look that up, right, Jessica? Yeah. Uh, and I watched a lot of TV, a latchkey kid. And uh, so my way into sort of entertainment performance was through these old movies, right, with um, 
Lucille Ball and and um, Bob Hope and comedy is really important to me. And so anyway, so when I went to East LA College, I took an acting class and and then that changed my world. So the feeling of performing was um, electrifying and life and life changing. And then when I went to college um, in San Jose State, I think um, one of one of a seminal moment was Dr. Ethel Pitts Walker said to me and my friend at the time, who's now my comadre, so still a good friend, Pamela Salazar, said, you guys need to find your tribe, you find your people, <clears throat> which meant in that time, Latinos, Latinas, Latinx now. Um, and uh, because she believed in community building and and working with uh, people that uh, share identity and culture, but also because uh, that world of, of theater for Latinos, Latinx people, was not being taught <clears throat> at the time. Was not as is not as popular. So we found a group called Teatro Vision in San Jose, and that began my trajectory into theater. Uh, and so a seminal production at school was actually Maria Irene Fornes's The Conduct of Life. So if you don't know Maria Irene Fornes, you should. Uh, Cuban, Cuban American. Uh, she passed away a couple of years ago, and she brought through a lot of one of our current playwrights, <clears throat> Latino playwrights, and um, seeing her show and reading her work and then digging into uh, how many people she had worked with, taught, and 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 ushered through in theater uh, changed my life completely. And so um, it has, a, you know, my base is rooted, I think, in Maria Elena Fortness. I never learned from her. I never took any classes from her. Uh, I'm not a playwright like her, um, but everything that she was about, the story she was telling, the, the character she created, the avant-gardeness of writing and directing your own piece and the boldness of not being a, a traditional playwright that, you know, she was a painter, uh, just sort of changed me, I think, molecularly. And uh, so, so that's very seminal. Thank you. And that, that is such a good segue into the rest of our conversation because um, you're talking about finding, finding your community, finding your, the, the people who are making art that excites you. And um, we did a prep call and I shared with you both that I really hate the term networking and the idea of networking because it puts into my head this very, um, I don't know, transactional uh, experience. And I think when when I was first starting to go to conferences and first starting, I had this like push, like, oh my God, I got a network, I got a network. And I would end up with like this stack of business cards. And then I would go home and be like, I don't know what to do with these because I don't actually, I, I don't actually have reasons to follow up with these people. And am I supposed to just email them and say like, hey, we met at the conference. <laughs> and so it was hard for me to to navigate that and it took me a long time to figure out that there were different there was a different way to approach that that's more rooted in in community and curiosity for me um i wonder you are both very very tied into the theater community and various different theater communities um i wonder if you can talk about what networking means to you and how you have seen it be done well and what you think people are actually potentially talking about when they talk about the value of networking. So I'm going to start with Jess, what do you think about, what do you think about that term? What do you think it actually means? Mm, I understand your aversion to that term. Um, when I first got out, especially when I first got out of college, I really was like, oh, I don't have any idea, you know, and this idea of like sell myself, Ooh, this feels gross. Ooh. And I really backed away from it. I mean, and, and I, I spent, um, personally, I, I mean, my fear, uh, the way I kind of turn, I, I tried to make, make work, um, and put my fears into actually the doing of something that I, um, that I had more, you know, feeling for. And through that, then I would say I found that the doing of work then helped me find people. Um, and people that maybe I had more, instead of a, a cold, like, walk up, like, hi, you know, and who, who are you? And how do I explain who I am in three sentences that that's impossible? Um, 
so being and, and also the experiencing uh or the ex uh, theater also uh, theater most things in general but theater especially is an experiential art and the not just for the audience but also for the makers and the experience of making and the experience of going about the task of making um led me to finding people to work with or uh didn't feel i mean so it's networking but it doesn't feel like it's it's not that thing you're like oh i'm doing this thing you know and i mean i totally understand like the follow-up you know feeling weird about following up and no but they're not going to remember me um something i have found both as a as a person looking for mentorship and then also as a mentor is that more often than not folks want to talk about like they they want to help they want they are they're interested to have a conversation oh you want to like you think of like i don't want to you know bug them and tell them how great they are bet you that person wants to hear it if you if you lead off at a positive if you lead off with a you know what is it and also what is the th why why are you interested in this person what are the things that are leading you that way because then that opens up a conversation as well you know but yeah going in a positive i mean more often than like i say more often than not like if i get sent if I, someone sends me a note i will i will do my best to respond and possibly lead to other you know like coffees and chats and things like that um which is kind of to me how networking works now it's more of an unfolding as opposed to like here i am this is what you know know me but it's like, this leads to having a coffee. This leads to having a conversation. Oh, you should meet these people. Oh, this is where, and it becomes this kind of windy, what do they call it? Butterfly conversations, right? That pop I around. call it rabbit trail. Mm, yes. Oh, the rabbit trail. Right? Yes, exactly, exactly. Man, yeah. there's so much in, yeah, there's so much in, in what you just said that I think is super helpful. Um, yeah, and, and it's also something that we've been hearing a lot this summer like coming from the work coming from what excites you creatively we had we had lisa during talking about fundraising and how to like and also kind of how to create your own work and um what she said is like don't start with the 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 you can't start by saying oh i want to fundraise you have to start by saying what do i want to create what do i want to make and then go from there and i think it it, it is weirdly the same with networking yeah i think so um, and I think you're absolutely right that people like to talk about themselves and people like to feel appreciated. And one thing to lift up out of that is like specificity. So if you send a cold email to somebody and you say, hello, I see that you're a director. I am also a director. Do you want to talk? That's a harder, that's a harder way in than like, hey, you're involved with the Kilroys and I see that you've directed work by this person that I really love. I would love to connect with you and just talk about the work, right? Like mm -hmm. the more specific you can be in that networking. Um, and that also makes it less of like, I know I'm supposed to network. So here I'm like, totally. <laughs> I, I am supposed to connect with like five people at this event. And so I must connect with five people and here are my five business cards and I did my networking. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Seuss, do you want to add anything about like networking, meeting people? Because your your entire focus is community building, and that that's in a way it's kind of the same thing. Uh, yeah, you know, um, I I don't have a problem with networking. I love that you know I love the word, and it also. Um, means many different things, right? So it's a network. It's a network of people. We know the connotation of networking, which is why I understand when uh, Jessica or Camille don't like it. Um, I think I, you know, especially when I went to San Jose State, I felt like, oh, cocky, I'm from LA. So there's this networking thing in my blood. Uh, there's Hollywood here, it rubs off. Um, I also was an older student. You know, I was at San Jose State. Uh, probably at 22 as opposed to 18 so so my brain was just a little bit just a little bit different um i'm from a big city you know whatever that means because san jose at the time literally had dirt lots downtown uh it was amazing uh so the word networking was always exciting to me uh i have that personality i think that um i do want to communicate i do find people intriguing so so if it helps 
to think of the word networking, to replace it with something else, uh, which is as simple as meeting people um, or getting to know somebody, then do that because a shy person could still network, but different words for the same thing, right? I, I like to use that a lot because, you know, your word for, for um, networking could be my word for curiosity, um, meeting somebody, uh, you know, et cetera. So, so, so I don't think anybody should feel weird. It just, just change. It's like if you're an acting student, right? There are different schools of acting. And so you're like, oh, I like this method as opposed to this method, different words for the same thing. You know, the, the styles change a little bit, but if I talk to you about stakes or tactics or, 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 um, or, uh, or subtext, you know, you may understand that you may not. So it's the same thing. Um, I love networking. I, you know, um, and I know in the beginning, it's, you know, when you're younger, you may come off more tactless and, and ruthless and cold. So you sort of just have to hopefully make room in your brain and your life to step back to check yourself at every case because um, it's just a learning process, you know, networking, you get better at it. Uh, but um, but yeah, get to know somebody, you know, find out who they are before you start networking and, and follow up. If you, if you, I always forgot to take my business card. <laughs> so totally. it's stupid that way. <laughs> so I purposefully just made, maybe I didn't network with a lot of people, but I made sure that if I was going to network, I was going to look for the people that I knew I wanted to meet you know, and then leave room with the strangers to just find in, in, in casual conversation where we land, you know, on something, uh, you know, maybe it's like, oh, um, uh, we both lost our mother really young and we start to talk about that. Then that doesn't mean it's gonna lead to a job or mentorship. That just means you're gonna meet somebody at that moment to share an experience and emotion. And, and maybe that's it and that's okay. Uh, it's not a wasted time, it's, it's a, moment. Uh, and then there's some people that you say, oh my God, I loved your show. It was so moving, blah, 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 blah. Uh, see, I even say blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 and then that could become a personal, a professional relationship. Yeah, I think it's a great point that you're not going to have a relationship with everybody that you talk to and that's normal and that's fine. And that doesn't mean that you don't connect with people. And also as you were talking, you see, so you are such a good listener when you're talking to people. I feel like we've, we've been doing these community circles. Wait, what did you say? Can you repeat that? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you're the best. Jesus and I normally share an office. Obviously, we haven't the past few weeks, but I miss sharing an office with you. Anyway, Jesus is a really good listener in that he's, he's, he's listening deeply and connecting with people. And Jessica, you were absolutely the same way, that you are not, um, you're not kind of waiting for somebody to finish so that you can talk when you're, when you're connecting with people and connecting as humans and as artists. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's, that's really important. And, and that, that goes back to like the, the superficiality that it can it can feel like that sometimes, but not if you're just meeting people and if you're just having the conversation to have the conversation, you're not having the conversation already with an end goal in mind. You know what I mean? I think the like-minded people, and I want to I want to echo the or boost up the curiosity part of what uh, he was saying, and then in terms of um, the the opportunity, also the like to think of those moments of networking or whatever those moments of group right and that in those moments of group there's i also have a, one of the reasons i love it is i have an opportunity to talk to people about what i love you know and so that's also part of what and, and i'm listening to people talk about what what i love and so it's like these moments where i'm not blocking over uh, about about theater over people who don't do what I do, you know what I mean? Or I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not boring anyone by going on and on and on about a show that I loved because it's, it's, there's a back and forth to it. And I think that part of, yeah, thinking of it, like I think having a different word for it is absolutely right, Jesus, in terms of like, you know, it's, it's conversation. You're having conversation with like-minded people and like, what are you all doing? What's going on, you know? And figuring out, yeah, you know, asking questions, 
that's the other thing. I mean, cause the, and the, you know, find out so much by listening, right? I mean, it's amazing. The, the last session in this series is going to be creating a, um, like a personal artistic mission. So just to say, because then I think the more they listen, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the more, the more deeply, you know, like the art that makes you excited and the art that you want to work on, then it makes it easier to find those communities or to form those connections. So like I could have a three hour conversation with somebody about workforce development for theater and uh, equitable internship programs, right? Not a lot of people want to have a three hour conversation about that, but I really do. So if anybody wants to have a conversation <laughs> about that, contact me. But like, that means that when I go to things, when I go to a conference, I know, I know what I'm drawn to and then I'll see a session and I'll go, I have to talk to that person. I have questions for that person. Like I want it. And then it's not, it's not forced. It's coming out of like need and it's coming out of uh, like what you, what you said, Jessica, about like, I want to talk about this thing. Right. Um, and then it becomes exciting. And then it is about like, uh, there's, there's purpose to it. I also am, I'm, I really, I'm not good at small talk. I don't like small talk at all. But yeah, I want to, I want to talk about, I want to get into it with people. Right. So that's, that's also been helpful. Um, I want it. So the other, <laughs> the other thing that we discussed when we were having our prep meeting is that Jesus has problems with the idea of mentorship. So uh, <laughs> mentorship is not working. More I hate like mail. <laughs> But you had no. You're already under the bus. The whole time. <laughs> I know, oh, Jesus. <laughs> you're you're saying that as somebody who is a uh, an amazing mentor, who's got that like ingrained in your being, and who also sees this real thread of like being a mentor and being mentored. So can you talk about what you think of when you think of mentorship and how how you try to live that and how that's kind of manifested in your life? Yeah, I, you know, I mentioned that um, somebody had asked if they're professional mentors, and uh, I don't know if they're professional mentors. Um, I'm sure there are because we live in America and capitalist society. Any Anytime there's a way to make money and create a business, we're going to do it. So uh, just like you can pay for a tutor, you probably can pay for a mentor uh, or, you know, a career coach. Uh, so, so maybe there are, but I will say that uh, first to say that I uh, w got a mentorship grant through TCG or Theater Communications Group uh, in 2007. It was a two-year grant that took me into Center Theater Group, the building, and I was mentored uh, by Diane Rodriguez at the time, and she was part of the artistic staff. Uh, so the grant allowed me to learn uh, the ins and outs of the institution because that's what I wanted to learn. So that was a, that was a, um, how do you say it, a structured mentorship plan that uh, TCG Theater Communications Group developed over years. I think I was in the seventh round, so it was seven, seven, eight years by then. Uh, so I'm sure organizations have mentorships and fellowships and apprenticeships out there that you can apply for, which are really helpful. Uh, but then all that to say that, um, that that was incredibly helpful. I knew what I wanted. Uh, Diane reached out to me because we were in the same building. So there was something organic and natural in becoming a mentor mentee relationship. Uh, but then also as you start to to live in this mentorship world and people want mentorship, I think sometimes there's a there's a sense of do you want a mentor to help you get a job or do you want a mentor because you were inspired by the mentor's work and you want to grow in your own art making or in your own um, education, whatever that means, uh, art, administrative, et cetera. Uh, you know, why do you want a mentor? What do you think a mentor would solve that you can't solve? Or 
um, why, what do you think a mentor will actually bring you? And I think you have to answer like these, these basic questions because then if it's about, I want a mentor because the mentor is going to give me a job. I want a mentor because he, he or she is going to look good on a resume. Uh, I want a mentor because they are famous. <laughs> uh, um, or are they, I want a mentor because their, their style, it seems very aligned with mine. Their beliefs seem aligned with their, I, I love their art, et cetera, et cetera. So I just, I just say that I don't like the mentorship because I think sometimes people mistake it with, uh, they're gonna solve all the problems. Uh, they're gonna give me all the answers and the beautiful and infuriating part of life and living and growing is that you have to live and live and grow to find answers and and a mentor one mentor five mentors won't answer all the questions in fact sometimes they might throw you off um, and also mentors um, are happen you know the people that I listed uh, uh, were not my mentors because they had a label mentors they were mentors because i listened to them we had a rapport i believed what they said we we had a conversation so so that's why mentorship drives me a little crazy when people s s feel like all i want is a mentorship and that'll make everything better i don't think that's true it's a part of a bigger plan um so what is it do you really want? And maybe it's not mentorship. Maybe it's an apprenticeship. Maybe it's just a job. <laughs> maybe it's just a person to listen to you babble on because um, I love to babble on because then it clarifies. But then if I have somebody there, they could call me out or, or, or ask me to clarify and that helps me. So, um, uh, and one last thing, you know, Maria Irene Fornes, who I never met was a mentor to me because of her work style, because of her work, because of her aesthetic, because of, uh, there was a connection. So, so she's a mentor, but I've never met the woman in my life. Yeah. Uh, yes. I love that. And, and it, yes, what, what do you mean when you say mentor? Do you mean somebody to solve your problems? Do you, and I asked in the chat, um, for folks to weigh in and some of you are, are weighing in now, what do you mean when you say mentor? I also, there's, um, there's something that's a little bit different from a mentor that's an accountability partner that I think can also be super helpful, especially for individual artists. And that's, that's somebody who you connect with that, that you keep each other accountable and you check in with each other. So like every month I'm gonna have a Zoom with my friend and we're going to set our goals for the next month. And then we're going to, um, <laughs> I want a magic spirit guide as well. That's a really good one. Uh, but yeah, just thinking, so that's, that's a separate thing because I, I, I would argue that that's not necessarily a mentor relationship is to kind of keep you on track, um, that that might be more of an accountability. But yeah, who, mentors can be people that you've never met too, uh, like you Sue said. So I, I love that framing of it, of like really investigating um, what you mean by that it reminds me of last week when we were talking about uh how much you want to make and some people were like i don't care about money and it's like well let's let's investigate that let's figure out what that what that actually means and looks like so when you're saying mentor can you dig into what that what that means yeah there's some great answers um in the chat jessica did you do you want to tack on to anything that jesus was saying about that that kind of framing of what a mentor is um, yeah, I mean, hmm. it's interesting because I like, I like that you delineated between apprenticeship and mentorship because I think that is, there is something different there. Um, and also I found that a lot of times the mentoring, of, like you say, it, it, you know, sometimes it just happens and it's also one of the things of like, oh, let's see what is helpful. As a mentor, I, I also like to try to find out what's going to be helpful. Um, I have done stuff where I've been, you know, been an accountability partner for people at times, if that's needed, um, depending on, and so like trying to figure out what, how can, how can I, I how can I help is usually how I come into it. Um, and also trying to listen because sometimes, especially if someone's younger and coming into this at the, first, at the beginning, like just listen and figure out where are the things that I think I can help that they they don't know about 
right? Or where are the, like the parts, what are the pieces of the puzzle that, that I have that, or that I have experienced that they have not yet? So then those, those are the, some ways that I can possibly help in terms of as you move forward or which way you wanna move forward or what are the tools and the resources, that kind of thing. It feels, I mean, there is no, I guess what I'm saying is there is no like, this is how it goes, you know? A mentor does this you know, that kind of thing. Um, Cause it's gonna be different, you know? And like you say, I mean, it could, you could, like it could be someone you've never met. And it's about how you take their work and it, and the inspiration that it brings to you. And then what do you do with that? You know, that, that then becomes, uh, which I love. I love, I love that you're talking about that. Cause I think that's really important, Jesus. You know, that there are mentors that we don't ever, that we don't ever get to meet, you know? Yeah. And I, I think it's also like the term, it can just mean so many different things. There's, there, there are very formal mentorship programs. There's a local one, Protégé by Emerging Arts Leaders LA. I just put that in the chat. Um, and I, I also put some of the TCG resources mm -hmm. in the right. chat that Jesus mentioned. Yeah. So, so you can go through something that is super formal, but often these relationships also develop organically. So before I go, before I ask this next, qu next question, <laughs> I promised, uh, they didn't ask me because they're tremendously generous people, but please do not flood Jessica and Jesus with <laughs> hate, for them hate mail. <laughs> hate mail. Yes, hate mail only to Jesus. They are fantastic mentors. There are 115 people on this. Please do not let them, 115 emails. They're very generous people. But also, I, I hope you listen to what they're saying about kind of commonality and um, common artistic goals and think about who might fulfill that for you because it's maybe it's it's one of them. And if you are super drawn to what I'm going to say, you're not allowed to, but just to say your mentorship search is not going to be solved by Jessica and his, his or maybe it is. But so that said, um, I want to, I want each of you to talk about um, a mentee that you've had. And as, as often happens, sometimes I know mentees just quickly become colleagues or your mentor. So these are fluid relationships, but um, what is one of those relationships? How did it develop? And how did you kind of start then working with that person? Um, would one of you like to like to start us off? You've, you've each, I, I know that you've done this because I have sent many people your way. <laughs> and I know a lot of the folks that you've, you have mentored. Um, one of you want to? I mean, to, I could start go Jessica. So yeah, go. You can, you can breathe. Um, I'm going to make all this up right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, again, because mentorship is so difficult in my brain sometimes. Um, saying that I'm a mentor is bizarre. I know that, uh, for instance, Alejandra Cisneros, who's a wonderful director, she's local, she's in New York right now, uh, and working at the public. And, um, and uh, you know, she applied for what uh, that mentorship grant that I talked about morphed into something called Leadership U, I believe. So then she applied, uh, which is a weird sir, full circle because I applied with Diane at CGG. I started working at CGG, then she applied and we got it. So so we had a relationship um, uh, before we were friends. Uh, I produced, you know, uh, helped produce her work and we collaborated on work and I supported her work and her partner's work, Anthony Aguilar. They do this series called El Verde. And uh, I believe in, in them and I believe in her, especially, you know, she's tenacious and um, she's incredibly smart and artistic. And uh, so when she approached me to apply, I said, yes, of course. She was also in a transition phase in her life because I know her, so I was even more gung-ho to say yes. And um, uh, so, to, so to say that that, that relationship with mentor-mentee is a little false, um, because we were friends, we were colleagues, we share aesthetic, uh, we were partners. And, um, but what did happen from that relationship was that 
uh, I finally had somebody in the office uh, and a more um, nine to five permanent way to bounce ideas with. Uh, Camille knows, uh, and Tracy knows it even more because I Tracy sits right next to me, Tracy Kwan. And um, but I love to just talk him like I have this idea, blah 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 blah, blah you know, and then they could ask questions. Uh, so 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 uh, Alejandra became that right. She became that partner in crime for me. So I don't know how much I was helping her, <laughs> but she was helping me a whole lot in designing programming and questioning programming and executed programming. And um, so I think that went well. You're going to have to ask her the, the truth about the mentee mentorship. You know, you, you, there's always two sides to this. But for me, I could say that that relationship, that the partnership uh, was incredibly important because it, it, it helped me grow. It helped me have somebody in the room. It helped me have an ally. You know, when I needed an ally, it ha helped. It she became somebody that I would bounce ideas, but also frustrations, and vice versa. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, I tried to to give her my two cents. You know, about life and art, um, and you know, not take personally anything that she took from it or not. Um, and the same thing, I think, with me. So, so that relationship has grown and 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 uh, expanded. And um, who knows what'll happen? But but it started with a shared, I think, respect for one another. You know, I you know, I think she respected me. I respect her, and uh, that was incredibly important. Uh, uh, I think she needed me as much as I needed her. And I was able to do, do it. So that was important. So there was space, there was time, there was capacity uh, from each of us to to um, create this partnership for the next, uh, I think it was eight, like 18 months. Um, so that's a quick story of mentee, mentor experience. And one, so, you know, we talk about shared aesthetic and I think that that's something that's a, that's that's core and key to collaboration and and mentorship and and networking and developing relationships but i don't know that that's something that that you necessarily think about or get introduced to especially in an undergraduate setting can you talk about what shared aesthetic means to you uh yeah i i will say also that like i said with the word networking if it's not working for you, change the definition. You know, use a new word. So shared aesthetic, aesthetic, it's so blah, blah, blah. Oh, aesthetic, my aesthetic. You know, like even when you look it up, it's like, I still don't know what the word means uh, because it becomes a lived in, you know, just like the word capacity. Uh, 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 I was like, what the heck does that mean? Until it finally, you know. So, so you can look it up all you want, but then change, look at the cinnamon, synonyms, change the, what is aesthetic? Um, what do you like? Do you like the same things? Do you share similar beliefs in the art you like, in the art you make, in the practice, in the process, in the way you receive information, in the way you um, deliver information? Um, in the things you dream about, do you share uh, ideals politically, religious, spiritually? Um, or do you have a sense of place? You know, are you, you know, I'm, we're from Los Angeles. She and I are from Los Angeles. We love Los Angeles. We love people. We love, you know, murals. We love graphics. You know, we love um, branding and marketing, which is we have a sense of humor that is a bit uh, sarcastic uh, and pointed. Um, you know, we love to laugh, we love to eat. These are shared aesthetics and, and some of them then become compartmentalized too. If you're just talking about theater, staging, a type of work, uh, Brecht, you know, uh, uh, no, no, no proscenium, you know, agitprop, then these aesthetics, then you can drill down or, or narrow. Um, but that's that's shared aesthetic and we shared many of those. And so so you just, just change the word, change the, you know, a light and and ask yourself from the mentor, what do I see in that mentor that I share their aesthetic? Oh my God, they love hamburgers. I love hamburgers. We could talk about hamburgers for days. 
And then that begins a relationship and it started over a hamburger, as ridiculous as that is. But then it becomes an instant connection, uh, an emotional connection. And that is a bond that lasts longer than just, hey, you do theater, I do theater. Yeah, but what kind of theater? Who do you love? Who do you hate? Who do you uh, imitate? Thank you. That's super helpful. And I think if if any of you out there are like, but I don't know, I, I don't, I don't know what my aesthetic is. Yeah, that's 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 part of the work of being a theater artist is figuring out what you're drawn to, what you love, what excites you. Um, and you do know your aesthetic. You just don't use those words probably, and also understand that aesthetic changes and evolves. And you can one day just say, "I was wrong about that. I actually." feel something new because life changed you because it's a big shift or because it was a gradual thing that happened you know like the earth and, and earthquakes happening it's the shows that they watch on netflix we lost you for a second yeah, I think that's important. And also that you have different mentors at different back. in your life. Now you're back. I know. <laughs> oh, you're frozen again. Yeah, well, let's, Jessica, can you talk about- I'm if, back, I'm back, I'm back. There, yes? <laughs> um, Okay. Let, let, Jessica, can you talk about somebody who's been your mentee and how that relationship developed and um, why you think that it worked or why, why you think that, that you were able to create that connection with that person? Um, yeah. Um, let me talk about, uh, talk about Amy Ontiveros. Um, and Amy, yay, Amy. Um, <laughs> Amy, I believe, was referred by you, Camille, to hit me up for a coffee, right? <laughs> totally. yeah. Um, and yeah, and I said yes, and we, um, we had coffee and she was going to, she was just graduating from Cal State Long Beach at the time. Um, and we, uh, and she had actually, she had worked with another director that I know, Amanda McRaven, um, while she was at school. So we had a couple of, we had a couple of like loose connections kind of thing that we kind of started with. You know what I mean? In terms of the conversation, you know, how did we get here? Camille, oh, how do you know Camille? You know, and then starting to talk about different, you know, theaters and also experiences and jumping in, into that, you know, building on that in terms of what our knowledge of our, 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 ourselves and then each other. Um, and in the process of that coffee, I think, yeah, I was, um, I suggested that she apply for the uh, bootleg or for the, in, the county internship. Uh, county internship grant, which at the time I had gotten, gotten for bootleg. Um, and she did great, did a great application. Um, and uh, the, the few, the, there were a few of us who decided who that intern was every summer. And so she sailed through on that. Um, and immediately we spent, so we spent a summer um, with her interning at the theater. And that internship was very much about like, hey, come along with Jess and we're going to do everything. You know, and as we do everything, what are the things that you like? What are the things that you don't? What do you excel at? What do you have, what do you have knowledge at that I don't? You know, what are the ways in terms of, you know, for the organization and then also for the art we're making, because um, I was directing a play there at that time and she ended up being the, uh, the, on, uh, the, the, she took the assistant stage manager position and was the backstage person and was very much involved in the entire process of that play. Um, and so was able to see how she, you know, I, I was able to observe also then how she worked with the other people. Um, and then also, again, what are your interests and trying to find things, um, in terms of the actual work we were doing, what are some of these things, what, what are things that could be done around here that you have an affinity for? What are things, again, she taught me, you know, that's the other thing is that, um, you go back to this, who's the mentor? You know, the, 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 the things that she brought to the table that I don't, I don't you know, have for many reasons um, and that we worked really well together. Um, and so after that internship, I was able to figure out how to make a, a part-time position for her 
to be able to hire her um, to continue working with her because it was, you know, I mean, it was a great working relationship. And also then what she brought um, to bootleg was really important and um, more than helpful. Um, so yeah, so then basically like trying to find a, basically how do we, how do I make a space to be able to keep, to not just keep you here, but keep this relationship going in a way that will be um, cult cultivating, nurturing, whatever you want to call that for, for her as much as it was for me and for the space. So trying to find ways that we, that both can serve. And then, you know, through our working on shows together. And again, like you say, the, the, it's interesting, you know, the idea of aesthetic and um, because she's younger than me, she introduced me to many things that I was not aware of in terms of this online and social world and the things you can do and make, you know, and exact. So, <laughs> I'm keeping up. I'm keeping up. I'm keeping up. Got it. I got it. <laughs> but you know, that's the that's this this you know interesting this this our conversation that started as as a mentor mentorship internship turned into colleagues, also became you know friendship. Then runs through that because the friendship that is created through the experience of you know living, making, working together. And, um, and that continues, you know, on, on now. She also, she, you know, she's worked, she worked at Thymely. So we, all of a sudden it was like, I got to, when I became a resident there, I was like, hey, I get to see you again, you know? And that was really, you know, that's the other thing is the, what I, one of the things I love about the, the mentees or the, the folks that I have worked with like that, um, I love running into them in the world and finding, you know, continuing to see them make stuff, but then also like just running, I'm doing something, <gasps> you're here too, la, la, la. you know, I mean, it's like this, that, that excitement of, you know, the people that we get to work with in, the, in, in our industry, because it is usually uh, oftentimes for, for moments, right? Or I mean, six week moments, but moments, you know, you come in, you build, a, you build something together and then everybody goes off to the winds. But again, it's interesting, you see that word network is coming back now because it's like the, network or the web the ways that we all because every time we work on something it creates another experience that is going to then go off into another place and then i'm going to end up over here and like oh look i get to see i get to play with you again and we get, and we have this history from over there i mean that's kind of one of the beauties of our our industry you know that kind of that, i kind of went off track there but you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's the, the, again, there's so many things that you said that I think are, are really, really helpful in this conversation. And, and just to, to highlight that both Jesus and Jessica talked about these relationships being very symbiotic. That's how you say that word. And that, that they're both getting a lot out of the relationship and it's not a one way. And I also, there, I, I'm, I'm looking at some of the questions coming in and, um, these are both people who are mentors, have been mentored. Have either of you ever had a conversation where you like lay out mentorship terms with somebody and say, okay, so in our mentorship relationship, we're going to meet twice a month and we're going to, have either of you ever had that conversation with somebody? I've done a, uh, I've done a version of that also because, um, well, because to share it for the Satera mentorship, there are some suggest like we've, we've created some uh, beginning, like, you know, because it's also like, you know, the blind date moment in terms of Satera, that's one of the things is that you get matched with someone you've never met, right? So, so then in that case, there is like, here's some questions or here's some things, ways to you know, try to lay out what the next six months of this, because it's, it's a little more goal oriented, you know, in terms of or, or t because there's time involved, like it's going to be this long. And so, so try to, you know, th that's the most, but even those are for jumping off points, you know, or, and more because it's a blind date situation, as opposed to just like, a, hey, I, you know, like coming in with like, oh, I'm really interested in your work because of this. Ideally with the Sarah though, we're, one of the things we do in terms of the, um, the, re the coordinators is we try to match people who are look like, because we ask what they're looking for, what their interests are, things like that. So we try really hard to match people with what they're, so that they're going to get some, they, they, you know, the, there are goals that they have already set out. So that's a little different, but that's about as close as I've come to something like that. 
Yeah, that's that's similar. I've been I participated in the protege program through AALLA and then of course been an intern mentor. So I think I think it's interesting to think about are you participating in a formal mentorship program because then there is going to be structure around it or are you creating a relationship with somebody that you feel like you want to learn from or make art with or hang out with, right? And those are you can use the word mentor for both of those, but the the system and the format is going to be a little bit different with each. Like I, I, um, I have, I will say that I've enjoyed participating in protege as a mentor, but the relationships that I've made with people through that program have for the most part only lasted for the duration of that program. Whereas the ones that did come up organically are the ones that, that have lasted a much longer time um, and because they've been based on um, connections that I've made with people around art or around, you know, passion projects too. So it's just, it's, it feels like this is one of those times when there might, the, the word is a little bit too expansive. And as Jesus was saying, it might be better to kind of dig into what you're expecting and is this formal, is this informal, right? Jesus, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think uh, if it's a formal mentorship, job description, there's a schedule, there's a calendar. Uh, I think uh, from experience, when Diane and I started to work together as we were filling out our application, I made it clear to her. Um, but, but again, because we had a relationship before, uh, you know, at least a good five-year relationship, or maybe not, maybe three-year relationship before, um, about what I wanted and what I wanted was not to be her assistant. What I wanted was to learn. So I made that incredibly clear to her because sometimes a mentor might um, not understand that his or her role is to be a mentor that supports you. And sometimes they think that you're an intern, right. that you're supporting them. So, 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 um, so I think somebody had asked, you know, sort of how do you talk this through, you know, so make sure you, if you, if you know yourself, the kind of person you are, outgoing or shy, bound, boundaries, no boundaries, uh, start, you have to start with yourself and really check yourself. And if you're a shy person or you're somebody who just likes to use the F word all the time, like me, uh, then you have to start yourself and you have to use common sense you have to be tactful, you have to listen, you have to breathe before you answer. <laughs> uh, and, and then uh, you, ha you have the right to ask questions, to request of things, but you have to do it in a way that is respectful. And how would you like to be treated? Um, maybe similar to how you should treat others. Um, so if you want the sort of optimal experience, positive experience uh, for both of you, you have to um, think of how do you ask questions? How do you make requests? Uh, when do you make requests? You know, I mean, if you're really using common sense and this person is incredibly busy, maybe you should hold off, you know, um, but don't, but don't, but don't take it off your list either. Um, uh, there's art, um, sometimes there's a natural end to a cycle. So if it's a internship that ends or a mentorship that ends, great, you have an end, end date, but sometimes there's not. Um, and, and just know that that's okay. So if you want to communicate with your mentor and say, how often would you like me to communicate with you? And the mentor says, you know, once a week is good. Or if they say to you, you decide whatever you decide, just be tactful, use your common sense, don't do it every day. You could even start with two days a week and taper back or forward. Um, don't just be overzealous that you, um, that, that you make it difficult for somebody because sometimes some mentors are really good at telling you stop and some are not. Uh, so you, you have to drive the experience you want always you have to drive the life that you want the goal you have to drive towards the goals that you want and if mentorship is one of them it's about a relationship and how do you handle a relationship so it's like crossing the street stop look both ways 
<laughs> and then cross the street. <laughs> Make sure it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It's true. So true. It is. And I think that I, I, I love hearing from people like um, David Jimenez is an intern that we had in January. And he sent me an email a couple of days ago with an update on the fellowships that he'd applied for, because I talked to him about those fellowships. And I was like, delighted to see his name in my inbox. And he had a really specific thing that he was sharing information about. I find it a lot harder when somebody reaches out and says, hey, just want to say hi, I hadn't talked to you in a while, because then it's like, hi. And again, being a little socially awkward and not being good with small talk, that's harder <laughs> for me to engage. Um, so yeah, establishing kind of regular communication. Um, I'll also say that like, I, I get asked a lot for like letters of recommendation, and I just got asked last week for a letter of rec from somebody I hadn't heard from in two years and that I hadn't worked with since 2016. And that one, I don't often say no, but I had to say no. Cause I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know who you are anymore. And I don't know, I don't think I can help you. And that's, so that's the other thing is like, what is the relationship that you have with them? How, how do you keep it going? Cause it's not, because that goes back to like, do you want an accountability partner who's going to be the one emailing you and saying like, yeah. how you coming on your headshots, right? Or do you want somebody that you can go to and say, hey, I'm applying for this job. And I can, can we have a phone call and go over like my cover letter because I have a draft and I'm just not sure what to say, right? That's like a more mentor relationship than accountability. I want to also what comes up for me is to make sure for I have to clarify for myself that it's not about a, it's not a teacher relationship because I think that's also a that's a very that is a different relationship and especially I know coming out of school it's that's a, that's a relationship that is more known or like that's the the thing fall into and I don't when I in my in mentoring I don't think of myself as a teacher um maybe more so again in that thing of like maybe not not wanting if, if you want it if you want some accountability I can be there for you but it's not accountability to me right I'm not going to be giving you I'm not going to be giving you the A's or giving you a great you know what do you mean so that like to really figure out hopefully figure out how to have accountability with yourself and like that's also part like ideally as a mentor I'm I mean I'm being helpful I'm modeling, hopefully, and these, you know, that, that you're going to take these tools, these resources and do whatever the, the awesome things you're going to do, you know, not looking for somebody to like, you know, not making mini me's or something like that. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's not what I'm interested, what I'm interested in. And I also don't think that's what mentorship is for. Yeah. It, it, that's great. And, and, and a teacher can also be a mentor or a teacher mm -hmm. can shift into a mentor, but they are different yeah. relationships. And once you're out of school, yeah, nobody's giving, nobody's grading you. <laughs> nobody's. Right. Well, I mean, hopefully that would take some of also, especially if you're talking about trying to, to talk to someone who's older, right. And that relationship often is like, oh, it's like a teacher and that has its own that has its own kind of emotional baggage to it, right? So trying to let go of that as much and just be able to, and to think of like, okay, that person is older than me, they have more experience, whatever, but that's, and that's one of the reasons why I wanna to talk to them, you know? It's not, it, I like, and to not think, oh, I, I don't belong here because I'm not the, in the same place as them, you know, that kind of thing, if that's making sense. Yeah, no, it, it does. and I. <laughs> there, there's a thread of different questions that are all like almost brass tacks about developing these relationships. So yes. I want to, I want to shift us for a couple of minutes and talk about, so somebody approaches you for the first time. This is a new, new human to you. You've never met this human before. What is a good way to approach somebody if you are if, if you do feel drawn to them, if you're like, whoa, this person seems real cool and I really feel like I could learn something from them, how do you like to be reached out to? And either of you can, can take that. With a $100 bill, that usually <laughs> works. 
<laughs> with 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 that cheeseburger that always works too. Coffee for Jessica. Apparently, that's all it takes. I know, right? <laughs> oh. uh, maybe. Uh, maybe. How about a, 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 I like to also be. You know, I like to go to the theater. Yes. I mean, when we were, but at the same time, I like to go to do, have an activity, right? So that it's not just like, oh, now we have to just talk at each other. So okay. somebody sends you an email and what do they say? Do they say like, hey, Jessica, want to go see a play? <laughs> like what else? Like literally what's the, what's the initiation of that relationship that, that, that works for you? Um, I want, I, I, I'm curious as to why you are contacting me. Like whether it's that Camille said I should contact you or I saw this thing, or I cap it upon your website, whatever, whatever that context is, you know, my aunt knows your mom, that's happened. So, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, those, like, put the, put it in context for me, um, in terms of, and also where you're coming from. Um, and then, yeah, and then, like, some sort of, I mean, and, and then an ask of sorts, and the, in the ask, you can, I would, I like it when it, like you were talking about a little bit of specifics and not like, you know, some wide open general, I'm thinking about being an artist. Great. What kind of artist are you thinking about being? And because then also when I walk, when I come in to meet you, I'll have a better idea of where, what your context is and how, how can I help, you know, to say, I'm just going to, you know, I want to be an artist in LA is like, great. What kind of artist and what are you interested in? What's the kind of work you make? you know, and the whys. Yeah, I think that's, that, that will also interest me in having a conversation with you, you know? Yeah, I think uh, um, people have been talking about in the chat about uh, they're shy or they could word vomit. Um, I have to, I have to just say that because um, I have points when, when I'm shy too, uh, believe it or not. Uh, but you know, you are who you are. You have a personality. Everybody has a distinct personality uh, that is charming in your own way. So if you are always honest and truth, truthful, uh, uh, genuine, um, then then that that's going to be that's going to land. That's going to resonate. If you are pushing and trying this new identity or thinking you're acting a certain way because you're meeting Jessica or Jesus or anybody. Um, then that that that'll get in the way. So so again, like I said before, just 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 always give your m brain a moment to think before you to you act. So so being a shy person is not bad. Being an extrovert is not bad. Um, they all have their advantages. But if you lead with genuine, uh, you know who you are, then then we will we see that we feel that right. Uh, most people do, and I think people in the arts probably do it feel it even more their feelers are out um and also you know do not take it personal it, none of this is personal in the beginning there are so many people in the world there's so many people that we meet that you meet that you will re-meet and sometimes it takes a couple of meetings to to remember your name uh, just like it would take you a couple of meetings to remember a name. Sometimes some of us uh, need to see the work. We need to see who you are. Uh, we need to see your name, your face, you know, a couple of times in different lights in the day and the night. Um, so, so, so remember that, you know, again, it's very base, you know, remember that, don't take it personally. Uh, approach you, whoever you want to approach, as many times, but in a genuine way, and uh, be curious. Um, but also, um, if you're going to email somebody, you know, just uh, just 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 make sure it's clear and succinct. And and if you don't get a reply, it's not personal. It's it's the dreaded email. And who are you? I have things to do. Um, so you try something else, you try it again, maybe you see them in person, maybe you send them a letter, maybe you send them a postcard. You know, if you want somebody to, to know about your shows, 
did you already establish a relationship where you left open communication? And if you did, then that's great. Then we will always be happy to get your postcard, to see your email, to get an occasional message. If we didn't establish that from the beginning, then it, it's a little difficult because it's about repetitive. It's about seeing you and, it, and, and it's less about um, filling my inbox with, with information. If you want to just genuinely also invite me to something or just let me know that you're doing something uh, that's one thing as opposed to I want you to hire me and see that I'm a director um, well if we create a relationship I know you're a director so keep inviting me I will see your work someday um, there's only so many hours in the day to see work to to have lunches to have coffees you know we all have family friends and school etc so so just remember that. I mean, if you're busy, everybody's busy. Uh, if you're not busy, you, you should be busy. <laughs> I think, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, this is all. So, so just remember all that stuff. So I think it's, a lot of this, a lot of what we're talking about, and it makes sense because this is a relationship, is almost like dating. Like if you go on a first date with somebody and they're like, so um, I'm really interested in marriage. Do you want to, do you want to marry me? You'd be like, Whoa, oh, that's moving <laughs> fast, right? Yeah. This is creating a relationship and it has to start with getting to know each other. So this is not a, a, a quick thing. And um, to me, a really good way, to, kind of what we're talking about as well, is something called an informational interview, with which is just following your curiosity and asking somebody who you think is interesting to chat with you for a while. And if if I feel like that can also take the pressure off of uh, of of you as folks who are seeking mentors to think of it as I'm going to have one meeting with this person and I'm going to go in and ask them questions about their work and try to learn some things about who they are. Um, that's what an informational interview is. So, um, and then, then it's more like that initial like coffee date instead of going straight to like, so uh, uh, when are we going to get married and are you interested in a commitment and like you gotta, you gotta start slow, you gotta start slow. So informational interviews and both I've I know both of you have done a lot of them. Um, somebody called out uh, Patricia Garza as their mentor. Um, Patricia told me a few years ago that they're always incredibly irritated when somebody does an informational interview with them and does not take paper and pen or something to write with because Patricia will be like, oh, you're interested in this. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there's this company and you should talk to this person. You should talk to this person. And if the person that they're talking to is like, mm -hmm, they're not going to remember it. So respect their time. Uh, also, you should not be getting into, let's say an informational interview with Jessica and starting out with, so what do you do? <laughs> like if you can Google it, that is not an appropriate question to ask in an informational interview. Whereas cutting in and saying, Jessica, you worked on this on this show that sounds really interesting a few years ago and you collaborated with this person. I'm wondering how that relationship started and how it was working with them. That's an informed question. So the more that you can come into these initial meetings with somebody that you find interesting with informed questions, the more they're going to feel you're going to get to that place more quickly. You're going to get into the deeper conversations more quickly. Um, because I know that that it's a it's a hard thing to come in to an informational interview and realize that um, that the person has not done like any any research or if they're asking you questions like um, so what do you do you know it's like well, okay, how do you what do you so have have um, do enough research that you're coming in really excited and again going back to curiosity super curious about this person right. Um, any other, and then uh, people have asked about following up, send a thank you, it can be a thank you email. Um, absolutely do that. If you, if you, if they told you to talk to other people, 
it's perfectly appropriate to be like, hey, you mentioned that I should connect with this person. Can you do, can you connect me to them? Can you, can you do that? Or can you share their contact information? I couldn't find it online again. Try to do it yourself first, right? Or try to find it. This is their email. Is that the right one to use, right? Show, be proactive about that. And then as far as following up, um, it, it's, at, at, I always like it when there's touch points and when there's a reason to follow up. So if, if you met with somebody and it's like a month later, you can reach back out to them and say, hey, thank you so much for telling me that I should connect with this other person. I had coffee with them today, it was great. How is that project going that you, that you know, to show that you've taken it a little bit further down the road from your conversation, that you've taken steps based on that first conversation and that you're ready to connect again. I don't know if that's helpful. That's just, I know people are, are looking for concrete um, and these situations are always different, but that's kind of some, some concrete tips. Jessica or Jesus, do you want, did that bring up anything for either of you? Um, I wanted to, I, I saw in the chat too, that there was a question of like, can I, how many times can I basically email you before, you know what I mean? And, and, and um, I want to say exactly what Jesus said, don't take it personally. It's okay to email a couple times, you know, if you, if you don't get a response. I mean, you know, there's yeah things can for a myriad of reasons that are none of them personal um and so yeah try try again um but then yeah the follow-up again um like if i get a follow if i get a follow-up email with questions about what we talked about or <clears throat> these are the actions i'm taking i'm i i am going to again i'm i'm, I'm interested you know, where is this going to go? Those kinds of things. And I might, you know, that, that, I mean, it's that, you know, I'm happy to give information. It's great when it actually is a conversation that is going to move down the road together, as opposed to like, here's some information. Good luck. Bye-bye. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I mean, sure, I can do that. It's more interesting to me and more, you know, and like I said, like, I might find you somewhere down the road, Rosie Glenn Lambert, who a uh, director in town, who I had a, who somebody told her to have a coffee with me. She took me out for coffee. A year later, I saw her show at the Hollywood Fringe and it was fantastic. And it was one of the shows that, and I hadn't seen her since. It was almost literally one of those things of like, oh yeah, she asked me to go see this. Oh, this show. Oh, this show's great. I'm going to move this to bootleg. And so I, she got, she got a weekend of shows at bootleg that, was a year, a year and a half earlier, maybe even two years earlier, we had had a conversation, but also because I had a context for her, I saw her work, I knew, and like all of a sudden it was like, oh, you, you're the one who just made this awesome play. We had that yeah. conversation before. Oh, you know, and that's like, again, two years, you know, with like two points of contact in the two years. Yeah, yeah timing, it's timing. You don't know, you don't know about timing and uh, you don't know. Uh, so if you keep a consistent connection, then it's a little helpful. Um, if you see somebody at the lobby, say hello without being a pest, you know, in a very nice, genuine way. How are you? We met. Oh, yeah. How are you? You know, it took me, uh, I have two really quick stories. It took me a long time to work with Lisa Peterson. Uh, I assisted on two shows at the taper, but I knew her work from the Bay Area. I loved her work. I'd seen her work. I saw her at the bootleg, actually. Uh, she was sitting, I forgot what show, she was sitting up there with Rachel. And uh, yes, I love her too. And she, uh, and I remember turning around, this is part of, you know, what I do and say, hi, Lisa, hi, I was in the Bay Area. I saw Anthony Cleopatra, whatever. Oh yeah, great, whatever. And she's just another crazy person talking to her about who she is. And then, because the community is so small, I would keep running into her and where, you know, you know, I was, I AD'd for her and we've had dinner, we've spent time together, you know, we're not like BFFs, but uh, what did grow was a, a natural uh, organic relationship from on a certain level uh, with a certain depth to it. Um, different from other relationships, like say with Luis Alfaro or Diane Rodriguez. Um, so every every mentorship, every relationship will have its different uh, depth to it, uh, to say. Uh, so don't worry about that. You know, it will it will grow as it's supposed to grow. Don't push it. Uh, it. It will just 
naturally grow to what you want it. But if you do have a sense of ambition of what you want in a relationship, then figure out how to tend and grow that relationship so, so it could blossom as much as, as, as it can. Because there is something for those people who are very ambitious and want something to figure out how to improve the relationship, um, how to work together. And then the second story is Yane Garcia, uh, who was an intern, uh, talked to one of our colleagues and said, um, I, how do I get into the library play reading series that Jesus produces? And she said, talk to Jesus. <laughs> so she talked to me since I knew her. I don't know why she didn't talk to me first, but she was shy. But then somebody said, and so I talked to her and I said, well, you know, I program a year in, in advance, sometimes a year and a half in advance, but if somebody drops out, I will think of you, hopefully. Because of timing that we didn't know about, somebody dropped out, and this happened twice, and I said, Yane, send me your script, let me read it, let me talk to you, because I still have to vet it, and then she's in the season you know, because there was an initial relationship, because there was a drive from her part, as shy as she was to reach out. So you could be a shy person and just say, hey, hi, how are you? As opposed to like, what's up, let's work. So she took it upon herself. She had the gumption to, to talk it through. And then she was able to come through when I said, give me your script, let's talk about this. You know, let's talk dramaturgy, tell me about your, your group and then they started to come support our workshops. They did a little extra homework, her group members. And I was like, oh, okay, they mean business. These are people who really want to have a relationship with me. They, these are people who really want to grow their art. These are people who really want to participate in, in what I'm creating together. Got it. They got a spot. Also, hi, Yane. There. Hi, Yane. Um, yeah, man, it, it's, again, being proactive, showing up literally and figuratively, continuing that relationship. Uh, there's so much in there. And I, I also, um, I always have difficulty with this, this idea of ambition because I've never thought of myself as ambitious and I've never... In grad school, it was a real problem because I felt like a lot of the people around me were like, I want to be an executive director. And I was like, I just, I don't, I don't know, I just want to do my thing, right? You don't have to, you don't have to have that, like, I want to be this, I want to be this, right? You can come into it through the work that you want to make or what excites you or what you love. You don't, it, you, you, so if that word ambitious doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. Um, yeah, change it. What's the next word? Yes, exactly. What works for you? Don't don't get people people don't get stuck in every word that we're saying. Change it for you. Adapt it for you. I mean, you have to. If you you know you you can't be negative about every single thing you hear, or if you start feeling negative about something, change the word. Oh, maybe this is what they mean, or this is what I want it to mean, and move on. Don't don't worry about that. Right. Jessica, I mean, otherwise we wouldn't be doing any of our art because, you know, or we would just be drinking all the time saying how horrible somebody is, as opposed to, well, what worked in the this horrible project they did, supposedly, <laughs> uh, you know, just, you got to change it. You don't get stuck on it. That, that will, yeah, ambition is not a bad word. It's a good word, but if it's bad for you because of whatever triggers then change the word it's the power we give to the word so you change it sure. that's awesome uh i there's one there are so many good questions but uh, and we only have four minutes so this this will have to be short but uh somebody asked a question about um something around affinity and whether when you're looking for a mentor or when you're creating those networking relationships, how much you should take things like cultural background into account and whether that can be helpful. Um, I think that's a really good question. So like either of you I'm trying to find exact how how important is it to make sure your mentorships match your exact experience, i.e. race, gender, etc. Because these things cause us to have different barriers or opportunities, unfortunately. That's such a good question. Either of you want to speak to that? Yeah, it's super important. It's super important to me. If it's super important to you, then uh, you have to own it. 
working with Latinos at college was incredibly important for the reason of shorthand, the reason of seeing people that looked like me, uh, shared certain values, uh, the need for Lat Latino stories, Latinx stories, and creating together was important because of we needed to see the, the, the theater. So whatever is important to you, politics, uh, identity, uh, social justice, you A, will naturally find that those people and work together or you have to make it so that you uh, uh, you 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 find those people but if you're being true to yourself you, and always bringing your whole self to anything then 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 being with your tribe is important um, but not being ignorant of the world around you that is made up of many tribes and only together can we really create change Jessica Yes. Yes. What, <laughs> say yes to all of that. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, it's interesting the word affinity, you know, cause it can, it can cover, it covers a lot or it can cover a lot and choosing and being specific about what that, you know, what is, what are the things again, being specific about what you are looking, you know, to develop what you are looking to, what you're interested in. Um, and finding people who are, yeah, I think it's really, it is really important. And I feel like there is, uh, there are more people like, like us who are looking to be there for people or open door, you know, be a mentor, do things, you know, um, so, so I would say being as specific as you want to be right now actually might be fruitful. Um, it's not going to actually, it's not going to limit you. I don't think, I don't think, um, you know, if anything, it opens up more. Um, it's important to me, you know, I try, I also try to make sure that I am available to folks who um, are seeking me out for very, for, 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 for that purpose, you know, and to be there for that. And to understand that that is also, that, that, that is something I'm interested in, but also, you know, the responsibility of that. Yeah. Thank you. I think the, the thing that I want to leave with is uh, at the beginning we asked who's interested in thinking about how to be a great mentor. Jesus, that's for you, my cat. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I, I, I want to, I want to challenge everybody. You, it is, it is never to, early in your career to start mentoring. And I feel like you are all doing it already and you may just not have that word for it. So I wanna end in our last few seconds. Who are you a mentor to? Let's, let's change that. And I'm gonna put that in the chat. Just think about who are you a mentor to? And let's, let's put some names over there in the chat. And you can also add what you feel like you're, how you feel like you're supporting them. As, as people are doing this, when you said that we were going to be doing this, it reminded me of that um, method gun, the, the rude max thing, you know, so. which I loved, I loved that. The, the, the it speaking, has come up before in this, the, in this session, Tim brought it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, the, the, the saying of the names, you know, I mean, and, and how important that is on a lot of levels to us humans, you know, uh, and it's important to that we say them for ourselves, but then also for the group, so that we all we all know that these people exist. And the more that we can see, like, oh, look at all these mentors. Oh, look at all the the people who are mentee. To know that that is available to you, there are there are many 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 folks out there. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And this is directly inspired by Method Gun. If any of you have watched that recording that we shared out, that's they, they have a moment where they bring the mentors into this mm -hmm. in gorgeous way, which is so moving. So I'm seeing, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of family, my brother, my colleagues and friends, my nieces, my younger cousin, my former colleagues reaching out to people and encouraging them and rooting for them during this time. That's awesome, Ruth. 
high schools, yes, absolutely. Those of you who are through high school, you can you can absolutely be a mentor to people who are at absolutely. that phase of their life. This is all, and that's kind of what Jesus was saying at the very beginning about mentorship, is that this is not you, you don't you don't like cross that bridge suddenly where you go at this point in my life I'm a mentee mm -hmm. switch over and become a mentor it's it's this the entire your entire career you're going to both mentor and be mentored and you get the this way and this way right <laughs> and we're yes. all like okay stepping forward here we go okay <laughs> then another foot forward here we go hey <laughs> yes, yes. You know? exactly. it's a big circle yeah yeah Aww. it really these is are, these are beautiful all right. Well, please join me in thanking Jessica and Jesus for their time today. You all are, are amazing, and I could spend all day talking to you. I hope you're you're seeing all of the thank yous coming in in the yes. chat. Yes. Thank you. I'm looking at them. Thank you, everybody, for sticking to, to and listening to us. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much. Thank you all. We, we love talking to you, and everybody, we will we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, Jessica. Bye, sweetie. See you. Have a good one. Bye, Bye everybody.